So how many times can a villain make an appearance in a movie? Well, Roger Stone is back with yet another subpoena. What's likely to happen next? Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So Roger Stone is back. Of course, he never really left. He's like the toenail fungus of politics, but he's back with another congressional subpoena. And this time he's reacting, at least initially, by throwing one of his sinister colleagues under the bus. Former Trump campaign spokesperson and aide, Katrina Pearson, Sorry, that, that's her arrest photo. Here's a more current photo of Miss Pearson. Here's how Newsweek is reporting Roger Stone's reaction to being subpoenaed by the House Select Committee. Headline, Roger Stone claims ex-Trump aide Katrina Pearson deeply involved with January 6th violence. And that article begins... Roger Stone, an ally of former President Donald Trump, claimed this week that former Trump aide Katrina Pearson was deeply involved with the violence of the January 6 attack targeting the U.S. Capitol. Posting to Telegram early Thursday morning, Stone appeared to suggest that Pearson deserved a great deal of blame for the pro-Trump attack against the legislative branch of government. Stone also seemed to be unaware that Pearson, like himself, has been subpoenaed by the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack. And Stone is quoted as saying, quote, Given what I know, I am perplexed as to why the January 6th committee has not issued a subpoena to Katrina Pearson. In other words, someone deeply involved in the violent and unlawful acts of January 6th, rather than me, given that I was not there and I have no advanced knowledge or involvement whatsoever in the events at the Capitol that day. Stone wrote in a message to his Telegram channel subscribers. Roger Stone. Now, how many times can a villain make an appearance in a movie? And what will Stone say this time when he's hauled before Congress? Will he appear or not? Will he invoke his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination or not? And if he testifies, will he lie or... I think I'll stop there. Remember last time Roger Stone testified before Congress? During the Trump-Russia investigation, you know, when Russia worked round the clock to get their boy Donald elected as president, So Roger Stone testified before Congress. He lied and lied and lied and lied. He was criminally indicted for seven federal felonies. He went to trial. I was in the courtroom. I watched the trial. He was convicted. He was sentenced to 40 months in prison. And then four days before he was to report to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, to begin serving his 40-month sentence, he demanded a sentence commutation from Donald Trump, saying, hey, I held fast. You know, I did you a solid. I didn't flip. Now I want a sentence commutation. And remember, Judge Amy Berman Jackson expressly said, Roger Stone, you weren't convicted for standing up for Donald Trump. You were convicted for covering up for Donald Trump. And then when Roger Stone demanded a sentence commutation, that very same day, just four days before Stone was to report to prison, Donald Trump commuted his sentence. And thereafter, he threw in a pardon for good measure, a corrupt pardon, mind you. And we are still waiting for our Department of Justice to challenge that corrupt pardon, 
that corrupt pardon was part and parcel of the crime of obstructing justice and conspiracy to obstruct justice. So what will Roger Stone do this time? We're just going to have to wait for the house lights to dim and for the movie to begin. But you know, in movies, the villains are almost always defeated, hauled in, held accountable, vanquished. Let's hope that the movie of America has a happy ending. And how about we make 2022 the year of accountability in America? Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.